Hi boys and girls, we're talking about Psalm 19 again this week. We're gonna be talking about this for a couple more weeks. And like I talked about last week, Psalm 19 is the longest book of the Bible. It's the longest chapter in the Bible. It is super long, 176 verses. But today we're gonna learn from Psalm 19 that God's word is true forever. It's hard to imagine forever, right? It's really hard for our brains to be able to think about forever and understand it. But we're going to talk about what forever means. God's word is the Bible, and it's a special book full of God's true words to us. So like I said, we're learning that God's word is true forever. How would you describe forever? Let's listen to a couple of verses that explain to us what forever might mean. And they're all in Psalm 119 that we're going to read here. So verse 89 says this. It says, forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. Forever, O Lord. All right. And then we got Psalm 119.91. By your appointment, they stand this day for all your servants. What else do we have? 96. I have seen a limit to all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly broad. So right there, we hear a little bit about how God's word is true forever. And that means that the Bible is just as true and meaningful to us today as it was to the people who lived a long time ago. In fact, the Bible was written over thousands of years ago. So in some of the Bible stories, we read they had a part of God's word. And based on the verses we read, God's word obviously meant a lot to them, right? They needed it just like we need it now. But back then, printing a ton of copies of a book wasn't easy. Books had to be copied by hand. So they had to write it all out, and that took a really long time for them. So they didn't have a lot of copies of the Bible. In fact, there may have just been one copy. And at one time, it got lost. You see, nowadays, we have so many copies of the Bible. I probably have 20 just in my office. We have so many Bibles. So in our Bible story today, people were turning away from God. And they didn't even realize that they were missing the one copy of the Bible. But one day, a young man named Josiah had people clean up God's temple. They had a cleaning day, and Josiah had them clean the temple. And guess what? Someone found part of the Bible in this mess. So in our Bible story today, there's a woman named Huldah, and she was a prophet. And Huldah helped King Josiah know that he needed to listen to God's word. And be really, really sorry for disobeying God's word. So let's listen to what King Josiah did. So this is in the book of 2 Kings. And this is what it says about King Josiah. It says this, Then the king sent, and all the elders of Judea and Jerusalem were gathered to him. And the king went up to the house of the Lord. And with him, all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the priest and the prophets and all the people, both great and small, they gathered together and he read in their hearing of all the words of the book of the covenant that had been found in the house of the Lord. The book of the covenant is the Bible to us. And the king stood by the pillar and made the covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes, so his rules. And he said this with all of his heart and with all of his soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book and all the people joined in the covenant. So the covenant was a special book of the Bible. It was the book of Deuteronomy. And that is a book in the Old Testament that we still have in our Bibles today. And in that book, 
it tells us all of these awesome things that has the Ten Commandments. And that's probably what King Josiah was agreeing to. Those statutes, those rules, those commandments, that's what he was probably agreeing to. So remember that Josiah read the same words that were found in this Bible here, plus a lot more. Since God's word is true forever, we also can commit to obeying God's word just like Josiah and the others did. And like I said earlier, we're learning today that God's word is true forever. The things God tells us in the Bible are true. So let's play a little bit of a game with this. So I'm going to say something like, the floor is down. And if you think that's true, I want you to give me a thumbs up. And you think it's not true, thumbs down. Are you ready? All right. Let's try it. So, the sky is up. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up, right? Ants are tall. Water is wet. It is spring. Dogs bark. It is daytime. Fish fly in the sky. Hmm. God's word is true forever. I think that one deserves a double thumbs up because that's really true. Totally. So some things that I said in our game were definitely not true, like fish fly in the sky. That's just silly. Some things were definitely true, like the sky is up. Sometimes things may be true sometimes, but not all the time, right? So when I say that it's daytime right now where I'm filming, maybe you're watching this at nighttime and that one wasn't true for you. The Bible isn't like that though. God's promises that his words will never change. His words will always be the same. The words that God put in the Bible are always true. They were true a long time ago, and they will still be true in a hundred years from now. We can always trust that the Bible is the true word of God. God's word is true forever. Can you say that with me? God's word is true forever. Let's close in prayer and thank God for his awesome word. God, thank you for your eternal word. Thank you that it stands true now, just as it did thousands of years ago. We want to commit to obeying your word and listening to it. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, boys and girls. I'll see you later. Bye.